What is up guys, your boy Gonzo and welcome back to a new video. Yeah, I know, I know. As you can see, I have a green screen behind me because I do some streams occasionally and I record some other videos, but don't worry, uh, it's okay. Anyways, welcome back to a new quick tip video. I know it's long overdue. Uh, the last one that I made was probably 15 years ago, but it doesn't matter. Let's just jump into it. So as you can read from the title, if you can read, I hope you can read. I'm actually going to show you guys how to mix your 808s and actually a couple of them, not just the same type of 808 for every example, because 808s are different. The context of using them is different. So, you know, I'm going to briefly explain the differences, I guess. But, you know, I'm going to actually show you examples because I don't want to just talk about them because that would be lame. Anyways, so as you can see, we have a pretty small project. It's just a generic, basic kind of trap beat, but you know, the 808 sounds pretty good. The thing is, it might sound a bit weird if you listen to it just by itself. And even if you look at the EQ, you might feel like, okay, what the fuck is happening? But the thing is, it doesn't matter how it sounds like by itself, it matters how it sounds like with everything else. In this case, I used a, once again, typical plug 808, but it sounded weak. Even on max velocity, I basically increased the level of, of the EQ. I did a low cut, and I'll explain why in a second, and I actually boosted the mids and the highs just so you can actually hear the 808, not just feel it. So if I play it again with the EQ opened... <laughs> You know, it really makes a difference. If you feel the 808, that's fine. But you gotta think of not everyone is gonna be listening to the beat on your speakers or your headphones or even on speakers or headphones. I mean, it's kind of impossible, but some people might listen to it on a phone. Some people might listen to it on a really shitty pair of speakers or headphones. So they might not actually have bass coming out of it or them. My point is, try to make your 808 be heard and felt at the same time if that makes sense and now the reason why i cut all of my 808s at around 35 hertz or 40 depending on the on the actual 808 is because those really low frequencies tend to cause problems with subwoofers or car speakers and you really want to avoid that because you might not hear them but who knows as i said someone might be listening to your beat you know in a car and all they'll feel is bass you don't want to do that because it takes away from the instrumental, it takes away from the song. Generally speaking, cutting your 808 at around 30 to 40 hertz is really good. Now, you can pretty much apply the same principle to any other 808. You gotta mix it with all of the tracks at the same time. Then again, you don't want them to clash, so in this case, I only boosted the mids and the highs like this because i know it doesn't have that many frequencies to begin with so it's not like it's gonna clash with the melodies and the hi-hats and everything so it's perfectly fine in this case but i'm actually gonna show you guys a project that i'm working on right now the mix isn't final but you'll get an idea uh, when i'll show you the 808 okay this is the project keep in mind i'm still working on it this is not final the mix isn't even complete so it's gonna sound a bit shitty but that's not the point point is i'm gonna show you the 808 and even some problems that i had with it nonetheless Here's the track. So it's a pretty far track if you ask me, but that's not the point. If I open the 808, if I open the mixer, you'll see that it's pretty cluttered. It has four EQs just because I didn't know how to fix some things because it just wouldn't work, so I had to add another EQ and compensate for the EQ and so on. So, if I just solo the 808... It's not the cleanest 808, and that's kind of the point. It's, you know, pretty loud, and probably because of the distortion, it has some audio artifacts, or it's just, you know, kind of uh, exposing the artifacts that the 808 already had. Even so, just looking at this weird 808 uh, EQ, I mean, you know, you kind of get an idea on the things that you have to adjust. Because if you just throw an 808... Uh, duh. 
Okay, so someone called me and I completely forgot what I was about to say. But you have to adjust the 808 to the melody and to all of the elements at the same time. In this case, I actually had to lower the bass. Once again, I had to cut it. I actually cut it at 45 hertz just because the 808, if I just play it by itself without any effects, It's a bit boomy for what I wanted to, to actually pull off. So, you know, I started just by adding an EQ. So probably actually now that I think about it, you can or I can actually get rid of those artifacts by just doing a high mid cut. But the problem comes in again. I can do this EQ perfectly fine, as long as I don't have any high slides. In this case, I kind of do have an octave higher kind of slides. So those are pretty essential in the mid area. But if I cut these down, it might gonna sound shit with the other effects. But you know, let's just give this a try. At least we're getting rid of the artifact, which you can't really hear in the full mix. You know what I mean? You have to adjust. You have to listen to everything and then modify and tweak these uh, small things. Then, you know, I added distortion. And as you can see, it's pretty rough. I actually boosted probably the mid to highs by like 26 decibels. So once again, you need to tone them down by adding another EQ. And in this case, I even lowered the low mids and some of the bass because once again, I basically shitted on what I did with the first EQ by making it even more boomy. So I had to tone it down once again. Then I added a, uh, an Ozone 8 imager just to make sure that the 808 wasn't phasing. And I'll actually make a video about phasing really soon just to somewhat keep it in the middle. And then once again, another two EQs. They don't really look healthy, if you know what I mean, but I did these two EQs while I was listening to the whole thing, once again, because otherwise I wouldn't have gotten an idea on how it would actually sound like with the whole thing. And now if you listen to the 808 with the whole mix, The effects really make a huge difference on how it sounds like. When I disabled it, it sounded really boomy. It sounded eh, not weak, because it wasn't weak at all. It didn't sound like it was complementing the track. You know, this weird chain of effects actually really made a difference. Now, I'm not saying all of your 808s should be like this, because they shouldn't, trust me. But you really, you'd need to learn how to adjust depending on the track. The basic principle of EQing an 808, maybe this is what I should have started the video with, is just make sure that it's not fighting with the other sounds. You know, doing a low cut at around 40 hertz or maybe 25 or 30, depending on the 808, you, 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 you kind of have to do it. But you know, maybe you'll need to boost the, the 808. Maybe you can even go on the 808 on the wrench tool tab thingy and just boost the volume. As long as you can keep it from being overly distorted when it shouldn't be, you know, you really have to basically learn to adjust yourself or the 808 to what you need it to do. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys managed to learn something from it. Uh, not necessarily following the usual uh, quick tip format, but you know, I tried to cram as much information as I could in this small video. I don't even know how long it is yet, but you get the idea. And yes, I did get a haircut. I got bored of the long hair. Kill me. I expect more videos these days because I actually have to make some videos to compensate for the fact that I didn't post for the last 15 to 16 something days. I didn't even know at this point. I was basically drowning myself in games and Netflix because uh, this quarantine just kills me. I didn't want to do anything. So yeah, I apologize. I expect a new loop pack soon. I'm probably going to try to release them once a month. And uh, I'm also working on the second Fong Mania tape, which is going to be out soon as well. If you guys want to know more about what I'm doing, please follow me on Instagram. You have the link in the description or instagram.com slash undeadgunso. But yeah, 
It was a boy Gonzo, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Also, buy my drum kits.